All right, so last time we talked about attribution and perception. Today, we are going to continue our discussion by reviewing attitude formation and change. We can see that our attitudes are constantly evolving. We as individuals are always being influenced by our experiences and social interaction. Whether it's our favorite band, political views, taste in music, or even our hairstyles, your attitude is always being shaped and formed over time, constantly evolving. I mean, I used to think that this was a good style. Man, look at that hair. Now, when talking about a person's attitude, we are talking about how an individual thinks, feels, or behaves towards another person, object, idea, or situation. Attitude is learned and is constantly being changed based on a person's experiences. Some attitudes are explicit, while some are implicit. Explicit attitudes are beliefs that the individual is aware of, while implicit attitudes are unconscious. Oftentimes, the individual may not even realize they hold these beliefs. For example, someone might consciously believe in gender equality, but subconsciously assume that men are better at leadership roles. Oftentimes, implicit attitudes can form without a person knowing it. They often connect back to different biases that an individual may hold. Biases such as the just world phenomenon, out-group homogeneity bias, in-group bias, or ethnocentrism. The just world phenomenon is the tendency for people to believe that the world is just and that things are the way they are are for a reason. Essentially, people get what they deserve. Now, unfortunately, this belief can lead to victim blaming, which is the idea that an individual's misfortunes are their own fault. For example, you see a coworker get fired and immediately think they must have been lazy or bad at their job, instead of considering other factors like poor management or bad luck. The next bias I mentioned was outgroup homogeneity bias. This is the tendency of an individual to perceive members of an outgroup as more similar to each other than they actually are. Outgroup refers to people that are perceived to be part of a different group that the individual does not consider to be part of. This is different from in-group, which refers to people who the individual perceives to have similar characteristics as, resulting in them seeing themselves as part of the group. The out-group homogeneity bias often leads to overgeneralization, the promotion of stereotypes, and minimizes individuals and their unique differences. For example, Jack, who is a huge soccer fan, says that all basketball fans are the same. They just like watching tall guys run back and forth on the court. But when talking about soccer fans, he insists that there is all types of fans, some who love strategy and some that just love the teamwork of the game. Now, since we just talked about out-group homogeneity bias, we should also review in-group bias, which is the tendency to favor and support people in our own in-group, while at the same time be more critical of those outside of it. For example, a teacher unconsciously grades students from their hometown more generously, believing that they just try harder than students from other cities, even when their work is the same quality. Now, the last bias that I mentioned earlier was ethnocentrism. This is the idea that one's own cultural or ethnic group is superior to others. Ethnocentrism results in an individual judging another culture or person by the standards of one's own culture, instead of from the culture's perspective. Essentially, you assume that your culture is the gold standard and that other cultures are in the wrong. This is the opposite of cultural relativism, which is when an individual views and judges another culture by its own standards, showing that no culture is superior to another. Now, like we have talked about, our attitudes change over time. As we experience new situations and interact with different people, we learn, adapt, and evolve. But sometimes people can be stubborn and they resist change. This often takes the shape as belief perseverance, which is the tendency to maintain a belief despite new information or evidence that clearly contradicts it. Generally, we can see people who are not willing to change their perspective perspective will often engage in confirmation bias. This is the tendency of a person to focus on information that confirms their pre-existing views and dismiss conflicting information. Confirmation bias allows an individual to support their current perspective without having to confront conflicting information. Ah, good old confirmation bias turning political debates at the dinner table into shouting matches since 1859. <sighs> Good times, you know, nothing like a good heated political debate to get the family just to feel closer together. 
Speaking of focusing only on specific information, we also need to examine how stereotypes play a role in shaping a person's attitude. Stereotypes are generalized beliefs about a group of people. For example, everyone knows that history teachers are stuck in the past. I mean, all they do is show movies and speak in this nice monotone voice that slowly puts you to sleep. Anyone? Anyone know the effects? It did not work and the United States sank deeper into the Great Depression. Now stereotypes are a form of heuristics. They allow an individual to quickly categorize people, allowing for quicker judgments to be made. Stereotypes can be positive or negative, but generally they cause an individual to have selective attention, leading the individual to focus only on specific information. Stereotypes often make up the foundation of prejudiced attitudes, which are preconceived negative attitudes towards a group and its members. These attitudes can lead to discriminatory behavior, which is the unfair fair treatment of an individual based on their group. Remember, prejudice refers to biased thinking about a person or group of people, and discrimination refers to actions against a person or a group of people. When talking about prejudice, we can see that there is explicit prejudice, which is prejudice that people are aware of and consciously agree with. There's also implicit prejudice, which is the negative feelings that an individual has towards another person or group without them being aware of it. All right, now shifting gears, I want to end this video by talking about cognitive dissonance, which is the mental discomfort or tension that comes from when an individual has two conflicting beliefs, attitudes, or behaviors. Cognitive dissonance occurs because people do not want to live in conflict. We as human beings like consistency and stability in our lives. If an individual does come into conflict and experiences cognitive dissonance, it'll motivate them to change their attitude or belief. The goal here is to go back to a state of stability where there is no conflict. For example, let's say that you care about the environment, but you drive a truck that uses a lot of gas. This could lead to cognitive dissonance, as you might feel conflicted about driving such a large vehicle and polluting the earth. However, you could fix this by planting trees to offset your emissions. Here, you still are driving your truck that is polluting, but you resolve the conflict within your thoughts by rationalizing your actions that contradicted your beliefs. At the end of the day, we can see that there are a bunch of things that can impact a person's attitude, shape their beliefs, and cause them to change their mind. Now, next time on the channel, we will look into the psychology of social situations. But before we do that, don't forget to go take the practice quiz on this video inside the Ultimate Review Packet. And of course, subscribe to the channel. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time online.